So we've had lots of people asking us what we ate on board the Disney Fantasy, what was the food like, what are the different restaurants like. So we've put together this vlog to show you what we did and what we enjoyed on our recent seven night Western Caribbean cruise. And we ate a lot. We're going to take you we through did. the entire food gamut that we had from early breakfast or pre-breakfast all the way through to the little chocolates on your pillow at night that the cabin stewards leave. The only thing we haven't covered are the upcharge, the adult only restaurants, Remy and Palo. The reason being, firstly, we think the food's great anyway. We love the rotational dining, so we're very happy to eat in those restaurants. And secondly, our boys aren't old enough to eat in Remy or Palo and going away as a family, we our like meals to eat together. are really important. We really look forward to our evening meals. But for now, let's take a deep dive into pre-breakfast. I don't think many people on land have a pre-breakfast snack, but at sea anything goes. So we tended to go up to Cove Cafe first thing in the morning, or I did, to take advantage of their free pastries. I was about to ask Tony what pre-breakfast was and if it was actually a thing, but you, yeah, I mean, you, he you, would go and grab coffees and he would bring lovely little dainties down from Cove Cafe and we would eat them in the room before we went up for breakfast. So yeah, I guess it was pre-breakfast or first breakfast maybe? I don't know, let us know in the comments below what you would call it. There's a wide assortment on offer and on the whole, these were my favorite, the cranberry slices. These were really good. They were the same pastries on offer as there are on the Disney Magic. You can also get complimentary pastries on deck five in the Vista Lounge or Vista Cafe, I can't remember exactly what it's called. And they're exactly the same. You can take away your takeaway coffee from either place, although you can get free coffee, just not specialty coffee, on the pool deck, on deck 11. And the speciality coffee is nice for a change though, and Cove's really nice to sit and relax in. And they can even print Mickey's and Minnie's and Donald's into the foam, which is quite a nice trick. We usually went to Cabanas for breakfast on port days and the Royal Court on sea days. Uh, Cabanas can get busy when the ship's at sea with lots of passengers on board. Yeah, let's talk about Cabanas for a minute because obviously the buffet is a huge part of everyone's experience on any cruise ship. And the food in general was quite good at Cabanas, but there were some things that we didn't like so much. Yeah, I have to say compared to other cruise lines, I think this is a weak spot on Disney. I know people will disagree. A lot of people really love cabanas and there are amazing things like the Mickey Churro waffles, which I agree are wonderful, but we don't feel it matches up to the likes of Celebrity where you have an even greater selection. For example, the Eggs Benedict station where they had three or four different types of Eggs Benedict you could have. But there is quite a lot on offer, not just the cooked food. You've got all of your chilled fruits, cereals, different kinds of milk, including vegan. All the things to put into your yogurt to make it nice and to your taste. And of course, porridge or oatmeal, depending on what you call it when you're part of the world. The theming is really cute in Cabanas though. Even the food stations are themed. For example, you've got things like Totally Toasted, where obviously you've got your baked goods. There's a reasonable selection of baked goods, which were all very tasty, and these are topped up throughout the morning. And if pancakes are more your thing, there is the longboard pancakes. This is where the Mickey churro waffles are served, when they are served. It was only once on this cruise. Here they are. Yes, they are as delicious as they sound. I and could eat them all day. Yeah, if you're going on a Disney cruise, you have to have them. A lot of the food changes daily. For example, here they have some Eggs Benedict. As I said, not as good as the Celebrity Cruises one, where they're made fresh. But here they have Mickey waffles, Again, more baked goods, lots of different pastries, eggs, anything you could really, really want from a breakfast buffet. It's not so much the food or the donuts at Cabanas, it's more the amount of space there is to eat it. Now, yeah, for me it's the space. I find it a little bit too crowded and the ceiling a little bit too low. There is space out back behind Cabanas and if you can find a seat out here, it's far preferable if the weather is playing ball to eat out here than it is inside for us. At least that's our opinion. We prefer to sit outside when we have breakfast. It's less crowded. Here's an example of some of the things we had. Omelettes, again, not freshly made, ready-made, and hash browns, and some watermelon, and a parfait. And here's a breakfast. Bacon, eggs, Danish, that kind of thing. And this is the sausage and egg. McMuffin-ish. McMuffin. It was really tasty, actually. 
In general, cabanas is fine, but we prefer on sea days to eat at Royal Court. Now here you can have breakfast off a menu with waiter service and you don't have to book ahead. And the service is lovely. It's the same waiting team from the evenings and they're so nice. They're so helpful. That's not to say they're not helpful and friendly in cabanas. They really are. All the staff go above and beyond. Oh, hello. It is worth pointing out that you won't necessarily have the same waiter that you have in the evenings. But on the whole, the food is similar to what you find up in cabanas, just presented much more nicely and obviously made to order, such as these Eggs Benedicts. I seem to have a thing about Eggs Benedicts. I don't eat them that often, you to be perfectly do. honest. I don't even really like the sauce very much. But I do like them when I go on a cruise. This is the French toast that they serve in the Royal Court. And as you can see, it's a brioche French toast, a little bit more refined. If you have room after breakfast, it will almost be time for lunch. And here you've got three choices, really. You can go back to Cabanas, which we didn't do, or you can go on a sea day back to Royal Court and order off the menu. Why not? The menu's really varied. There's quite a wide selection of things that you can have for lunch in the Royal Court. For example, calamari as an appetizer, which was really, really good. Sometimes you just want a burger, but you don't want to go up on the pool deck to get it. So these came fresh from the kitchen and they were really, really nice. Meatloaf? I can't remember who ordered that. That was me. Was it? Mm. And I went for a salad. I was, this was at the start of the cruise and I was trying to be really, really good and not eat too much. That didn't last long. Or you can go up to Flo's V8 Cafe. I that... really like the food up here. I think it's really varied. I like the pizza. Pizza's not bad. It's not brilliant, but it's, it's not bad at all. And they have different choices every day. Here's an example. And right next door to that is the Tomater Grill, where you can get lots of things, burgers, chicken tenders, nuggets. They also do daily specials, which are quite good. We had like a, a barbecue burger, I think. It had um, That's right. it was like pulled pork, things like that. And next door to that is the Taste Inn, where you can get, well, sandwiches like this. You can also get light bites and salads. But on the whole, this is up by deck 11, and we highly recommend it. Now, if you happen to be in the Caribbean on a Disney cruise like we were, you're probably going to go to Castaway Key and you're probably going to have lunch on land at Disney's private island. We hadn't heard great things, so we went expecting rather little, to be honest, but I was pleasantly surprised. Obviously, the island is beautiful. Here's Cookie's Barbecue. Now, it's located just past all of the normal beach areas before the slides, and it doesn't look like much. It looks like a standard picnic area you might find by a beach or a lake in the US. But going in, you have a wide array of burgers, hot dogs, vegan burgers. Ribs, chicken. Those aren't vegan or vegetarian. No. And there's lots of things on offer, all served and cooked up fresh for you right there. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yes, and, and the kids did too. It is all you care to enjoy, as is everything else on the ship. So don't be afraid about going up for seconds. Or thirds. There's plenty of salad on offer as well. And they also have cookies and brownies. Plus there's the usual desserts that you can get on board such as soft serve ice cream. They also have potato chips or crisps as we call them available which is quite good if you just need a bit of salt if you've sweated loads. Cookies and brownies were really really good. You do have to be careful they keep these hidden under napkins because there are so many birds around and they try and get in and nick the cookies. Now, because it's a cruise and calories don't count, after lunch you're going to need an afternoon snack. If you time it well and you get back to the ship after an excursion and lunch is still on, you can get some of these delicious little desserts. I highly recommend the carrot cake. It's kind of my thing. And the cookies, the small cookies, are soft and delicious. The ice cream, ice cream machine is available 24 hours a day, or at least I think it's 24 hours a day, where you can get soft serve ice cream as much as you like. And next to that is the Frozone drinks. Now these are an additional cost, but you can get Dole Whip, Yay! yes? Actually, they're Dole Whip floats and you can have them with or without rum. But these were just with pineapple juice and they were fantastic. And these are the famous Mickey Premium Bars. Everyone loves one of these and they are free via room service on board. We really used to enjoy going back in the afternoon, sitting on the balcony and having one of these from room service. But, the star of the show for afternoon snacks is this little guy. I had had my eye on this the entire cruise. 
I mean, it's just a Rice Krispie cake. You get them all the time in, in Magic Kingdom and all over Disney World and Disneyland, but it was a Halloween cruise and it just looked so good. What you're looking at right now is Sweet on You. It's located outside Cabanas on Deck 11 and they have, well, so many nice things. So many nice things. We could have eaten our faces off in here. But look how cute the little candy corn. But we went for the candy corn Donald. Is it Donald? Or something. This is Beth attempting to eat it. I didn't really want to, it was too cute. We're slowly building up a small following over on Instagram where you can find us at, at Traveling with Teens Official. Don't forget the official, that's really important. We're soon heading off on a 10 day trip which we would love you to follow along with us pretty much day by day on Instagram. And then of course we'll report back here and make it into a vlog later. But our following is not so small here on YouTube. In fact, we just today, just a few minutes ago, hit 4,000 watch hours. Now, what that means is that you guys have tuned in for 4,000 hours so of our thank content. thank you very much. In three months, so three and a half months, we've been, uh, we've been a channel. So thank you. One of the best things about cruising with Disney is the rotational dining. Bar none. Each ship has three themed restaurants and you eat in each of these throughout the cruise. You have the same wait staff with you. They travel from restaurant to restaurant so you really get to know your servers. And here at Royal Court you see they dress as princes and royal staff. It's different in Animator's Palette which we'll get to in a moment as well as Enchanted Garden. Your table number is always the same and your staff get to know which drinks you prefer so very often it's waiting for you when you arrive and you always have a bread course in every meal. On our first night in Royal Court for appetizers, we went for the French onion soup, which was very nice. And one of the best main courses was the roasted rack of lamb, which I remember from the Disney Magic and did not disappoint. We still had room for dessert, so we had the opera gatto, the duo chocolate slice and the strawberry shortcake sundae. Really good. Skipping forward a few nights, we were back in the Royal Court, this time on Pirate Night, for the pirate-themed dinner menu, Pirates of the Caribbean. The menu's quite varied. We started with cornbread, which was delicious. Then we had the deep-fried calypso crab cake. And then we were recommended to order off the children's menu and get the cream of chicken soup, which was delicious. For our entrees, we had King George's roasted strip sirloin, Jack's Treasures of the Seas, which was linguine and seafood, lamb shank. I had the lamb shank and it was excellent. For dessert, we had the caramel and macadamia nut chocolate tart, rum baked chocolate cake, and when we got back to our cabin, we had some pirate booty in the form of chocolate coins. As if we hadn't had enough at dinner. Our third and final night at Royal Court was on the very last day of our cruise. There's Captain Mickey welcoming us in. And we weren't disappointed by what was on offer then either. Despite there being a lot of choice, we all went for the same thing, the prosciutto. Can't go wrong with a bit of prosciutto. Nope. We did choose different things for our entrees though. I had the baked lobster tail. The boys had the fettuccine with parmesan chicken and Tony had the oven roasted pork loin. I wish I'd gone for the parmesan crusted chicken. It looks really nice on reflection. For dessert we all opted for exactly the same thing, the chocolate lava cake and it was delicious. And melting from the looks of it. That's because it's lava. Moving on to the second option for main dining rooms, we have Animator's Palette. Now, Beth, what do you think of Animator's Palette as a main dining room venue? I really like Animator's Palette, and to be honest, on the fantasy, it's the most interesting of the three restaurants. So the theming in Animator's Palette was different on the two different nights that we ate in there. The first night we were there was much more themed around Pixar, and this is reflected in the interactive screens that you will see later on in the vlog. And then the second night, the theming was much more traditional animation and again that's reflected in the activity that you get to do before you eat and the surprise at the very end. There's a really great artwork throughout on the walls, um, there's little displays on the table, the butter knives are second to none, you can actually buy those in the gift shop but they do run out so if you want to get one, get one quickly. One thing I'm going to point out here is that 
crush comes around and talks to the tables on the screens and it actually is a live actor doing this your magic band plus if you're wearing one will tell you when it's about to happen however in our experience, he does not talk to every table. He didn't talk to us. I think it depends where you're sat as well. Obviously, if you're right in front of the table, you're more likely to have an interaction with him. And I do think as well, they go with the younger kids, which is fair enough. For our appetizers, we all went for the black truffle pasta persiettes. That's a really popular option. It gets talked about a lot online and in vlogs. And for our main course, we decided to go for the tuna. Now, I've heard lots of mixed reviews online about the grilled tuna steak. It doesn't look much different to a normal grilled tuna steak, but once you cut into it, you can see the difference. It is very rare and we like it that we way. We like personally. it rare, but obviously if it's not for you, then you can ask for it well done. And we should add that our server, Samet, made these really, really cool origami animals for us every night. So here we are with fish. A couple nights later, we found ourselves back in Animator's Palette, which is what happens on rotational dining and the theming had changed in the restaurant to a much more traditional Disney feel. Here you see the seven dwarves and Snow White and the paint used to paint them. This evening we ordered the Malaysian chicken satay to start, chicken noodle soup which was recommended to us by our server and was on the children's menu. But you can order it if you're an adult. Yeah you can order from the children's menu they're happy to do that. We were given placemats to draw on before the meal started and the characters that we draw would soon be up on the screen as an animation themselves. Everybody in the restaurant got to do this and it was quite cool. We'll show you in a little while. For our main courses this evening we had the roasted filet of beef wellington and the herb crusted rack of lamb. Very unhelpfully, I did not take any photos or video of the dessert menu this night, but... There's quite a lot going on in the restaurant. It's, it's really good fun and easy to get distracted. We, we had have, this. Yep, this was chocolate cake, I believe, with raspberry. And a very, very nice apple pie with ice cream. And they drizzled cream on top of it, which made it even nicer. But as I pointed out at the beginning of the meal, Beth drew this picture on her placemat. I'm no artist. No, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. There and it is. There it is I'm up an in the animator. animation. Yes. Ooh. This is obviously done to music, but we did not include that for copyright reasons. But that was Beth's, and she got a sticker at the end of the meal, which made her an official Disney animator. Yes, so watch out for me. And here's my Halloween themed effort, which actually got shown several times. You are the star billing. Well, I mean, As I got. As you can see from the start here. I got Mickey Mouse at the very start, the Sorcerer Mickey, made my drawing come to life. And he's a pretty good dancer, a much better dancer than me. I don't know whose that is, but they're wearing a Disney Cruise Line That's top. That's clever. Yeah, if you want to be one of the star attractions, do something to kind of make yourself stand out. And then I came back tap dancing a bit later on, or I my told drawing you, did. you were the star. I know, even Mickey knows. And I got the same sticker. In fact, the boys got the same, and we kept them. We actually packed them in our Yep, yeah, they're in the luggage. bottom of the suitcase. They came back. I think one of our boys did one of these. Yeah, I'm I think the sure purple one, one in the middle. But that's Animator's Palette. As you can see, as official Disney animators, we actually got our credits in the rolling credits. But it's a great venue. Third rotational restaurant is the Enchanted Garden, which is down on deck two, tucked away on deck two. It's quite hard to find. The theming's quite evident from the moment you come down the stairs onto deck two here. The carpet has flowers on it. There's flower signs by the restaurant name, the Enchanted Garden. And that's very much in the keeping with the entire experience, really. You go through the gates. So I think the idea is you're meant to be like in a, in a garden in France or somewhere like that. It doesn't scream any specific Disney film or in Disney characters or Disney intellectual property, but there's no doubt about it when you walk in. You're in a Disney restaurant. It kind of is a bit like Crystal Palace mm -hmm. in Magic Kingdom, but obviously the, the skylights are false. We are down on deck two. There is no actual natural light in there. And it's meant to have quite a romantic feel. For appetizers this evening, we had the North Atlantic lobster ravioli, the ahi tuna and avocado tower, and the cucumber garden roll. For our main courses, we had the marjoram scented roast chicken 
and the slow roasted prime rib. Now, I can't remember exactly what it came with, but I'm pretty sure it was one of our boys that ordered mac and cheese to go with it. Again, you can go a little off-piste and order different things. There's another one of our little origami friends that we used to get nightly. Um, so do feel free to order off the children's menu. They're happy to accommodate you as best they can. For dessert, the boys and Tony opted for the chocolate brownie sundae. And I went for the lemon raspberry mousse bomb. Now this is one of the no added sugar desserts that they have on the menu nightly. I really enjoyed it. Not on the menu, but equally delicious was a seasonal offering, in this case a Halloween spider. Each of the tables got one of these and we shared it between the four of us. It was quite good. We were back in the Enchanted Garden on what I think was the second to last night of our seven night cruise. And the theming was the same, but I should point out the lights. Now, the lights in the Enchanted Garden are meant to represent flowers. They look like flowers or tulips. And very slowly as the night goes on, they open. So the petals open, you don't even notice it. And with that comes subtle changes in the ceiling color to mimic the daylight or dusk or pre-dawn light. You don't notice it unless you're looking for it. It's quite something. We all enjoyed garlic sautéed shrimp with rice for our appetizer. This was really good if I remember. And for our main course we had New York strip steak, oven roasted turkey breast. And for dessert we had creme brulee cheesecake. And white chocolate bread pudding. So that's our recap on what we ate on board the Disney Fantasy, what we liked, what we didn't like so much. It's by no means a full restaurant or food review for the ship. We haven't been trying to do that. There's really great vlogs out there that cover everything in detail. I'm thinking things like Disney Food Blog. They're really, really good if you really want precise details on the food. But we wanted to let you know what we thought and what we enjoyed. Really glad we could bring you some detail about the food on Castaway Key, but next week we're going to bring you even more detail. We'll take you through our whole day at Castaway Key from beginning to end. And it was one of the most magical places I've ever been. Yeah, it's definitely too. convinced us that we don't want, we need to go back on a Disney cruise. Yes, and visit Castaway Key again and possibly Lighthouse Point. We're yeah. looking at. Yeah, that would be great. Maybe do or a double dip. I don't know. We'll see. Let us let know. Let us know if you've done um, the double dip, two visits in one cruise. And also let us know in the comments below if you're booked to go to Lighthouse Point. We can't wait to see the first images coming out from there when that all goes live soon. See you next week. Bye.